Hello everyone and welcome back to the StarCraft Weekly News. I am Artosis. This is the news. Let's get started. There is a ton of stuff to go over this week. And like every week, let's start off with the TSL. You know, it is the most important and exciting thing going on. This past weekend we saw the first couple matches, uh, well first four matches really from the round of 16. We saw on Saturday Idra vs. Zalzi, Idra just totally owned Zalzi 3-0. Sen vs. Draco, Sen totally owned Draco 3-0, quite a surprise there. And then we had Noni vs. Tarson on Sunday, and Noni beat Tarson 3-0 in such a convincing manner, it reminded me quite a bit of the horror series. These guys uh, <laughs> not standing up to Noni at all, these European Terrans thus far. And then we had Phoenix against Cole, which I think was the big surprise of the whole weekend. And Phoenix took out Cole 3-1. Cole, of course, uh, you know, the fourth place WCG Grand Finals player. Really uh, surprising to see him out so early, but Phoenix is a very good player. You know, I thought it was going to be a good match, but I thought, you know, Phoenix, his TVZ is not up where his PVT is, where his TVP is. So he's not going to be able to do it, but he showed us all, and I tell you, it was... It was quick game, some really aggressive play by Phoenix, and it ended up working out for him perfectly. So Phoenix will move on, which may screw up the entire bracket, because if Brad OK does beat Mondragon, as I do suspect will happen, then we're going to see some really weird stuff happen, because Phoenix certainly has good enough PVT to give uh, Brad OK a run for his money, and definitely has the potential to take him out. So we may in fact see Phoenix breach into the top four, and, and uh, have to play against Rhett or Sen, so who knows? We'll have to see on that. Really, really impressive play by him. But anyways, we have this weekend coming up, do not miss it, Saturday, February 6th at 1400 EST or 20 CET, we have White Raw versus Cabal. That should be a pretty good match. You know, Cabal is one of these players that no one really quite knows how he got in here, but he is here, and I tell you, his PvP is good. This could be a very close match, and perhaps even a big upset. And then we have JF, the former TSL champion, going up against Gosi Terran, who is my pick to get really deep in this tournament, the black horse, the dark horse, whatever you want to call it, of this tournament. I really am looking forward to that match. So Tasis and I will be commentating those. And then on Sunday, February 7th, at the same time, 14 EST or 20 CET, uh, you can watch Day9 and Chill as they cast Rhett vs. Castro, a very important match for Rhett, and Brad OK against Mondragon, one of the best matches in this first uh, round of 16. So definitely make sure that you do catch all the TSL action this weekend. Such a great event. All right. Well, speaking of Gosi Terran, the top 16 player, I just put up some VODs of him versus Eastro Grape, some more tryout games for Eastro. Uh, definitely go check those out. Very, very close series, Protoss versus Terran. Goes the full three games. I'm not going to spoiler it anymore, but definitely go check out those VODs if you haven't already. Another huge news about someone else in the TSL top 16, Draco, has officially announced his retirement. Uh, you know, he says he just doesn't have the passion and love for it anymore, isn't going to keep on doing it. But I wouldn't be too worried, all you Draco fans out there. No one has actually ever really quit. I mean, even look at Nazgul, who quit forever ago. Look at Legionnaire, who quit a long time ago, Asem, who quit a long time ago. We keep seeing these names pop up again, whether it's just playing for some fun in the TSL, whether it's, you know, going active again. Who knows exactly what is in Draco's future? Will he play StarCraft 2? Still not sure of that. Uh, maybe done competitively with StarCraft 1, but then again, after TSL, pretty much everyone is, considering StarCraft 2 is right around the corner. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not too sad about it overall. I think that really no one's going to do much more in StarCraft 1 in the foreigner scene, unless you're in Korea. All right, well, Zotac Cups, goodbye. After 40 Zotac Cups, StarCraft 1 will not have any more. Instead, it's going to wait for StarCraft 2 to come out and continue there. That just, again, goes to show you how close we are to that StarCraft 2. You know, Zotac Cups never really get the coverage that they did deserve. Uh, you know, 100 euros a week. 
that is a lot of money being put into the scene for very little covers that it did get. Hopefully it'll get more in StarCraft II, a really good set of tournaments. Uh, the ESL Major Series is over. Hydra took out Strzok 3-1 to one in some good TVTs. You can go to the ESL webpage to see those VODs. Hydra had to go through Cole, Mondragon, Koget, and then Strelok. Quite a strong European lineup right there. Three very good Zergs, and then Strelok in the finals to win this ESL. And becomes the two-time-in-a-row ESL champion, so congratulations to him. Uh, definitely go check out those VODs if you do like TVT or either of these players. Should be pretty good. I haven't watched it quite yet, but I'm sure I will get around to it this week. Uh, Rhett has recently joined a new team. You know, he just left Korea, and already we see him on a new team. LLL is the tag you're going to be seeing him on from now on. It is the Lowland Lions. This is a team based out of the Benelux that is uh, Belgium, Netherlands, and Luxembourg. And Rhett will be the only player on their roster for now. They are looking to grow in the future, perhaps with StarCraft 2. I think most likely not with StarCraft 1. But good luck to Rhett in his newfound team. Uh, I guess we won't be seeing him play for clan leagues all that much, because there's only one player on the team. But, you know, at least he's still in the TSL. Uh, speaking of Rhett, I did give him the final interview. I just barely posted it. I'll throw it up on YouTube in a couple days here. And, uh, you know, it's a shorty but a goodie. Rhett with his final thoughts on his stay in Korea on the Courage Run, on a whole bunch of stuff. So go check that out, you know, the final word from Rhett coming out of Korea. Um, well, I think that's it for the StarCraft 1 news in uh, the Foreigner scene. So let's go ahead to the Twitter questions. Uh, I got a whole lot of them this week. So let me just get right into the ones that looked really, really interesting. All right. You say Hydra is one of the top players in the CJB team. Why hasn't he played any games in the minor league for CJ this year? Well, you know, the B team and A team are separated by house at CJ. Uh, just because he's one of the better players in the B team house doesn't mean he's going to get a spot in minor league, especially considering they can now use A teamers in minor league, up to four of them. You know, there are some very high level players over there at CJ, and most of them are Terrans, you know, all the people in between that you don't see in Pro League a lot, but are above Hydra. Well, they're in the A-team house, so they don't take place in those leagues and stuff, but uh, it's, it's pretty hard for him to get a spot in that minor league. I don't know why he hasn't been in it yet. He definitely does deserve it. He's definitely good enough for it, and hopefully we see CJ do that, but, you know, maybe... <laughs> Maybe they will uh, watch this and put him in. I hope so. I would love to go down there and film that. If he does play in minor league, I will film every second of every game. I guarantee you that. All right. Artosis, I'm toss user, but I would like to know what Terran suffers if his four-fact timing fails, and same thing for five- and six-fact timings. Okay, uh, four-fact timing normally is a really pressureful build, or you're setting up some sort of contain. So if you're trying to set up a contain and it fails, are we talking about does the contain get run over or you realize, oh, the contain isn't going to work and you turn around? Uh, now, if you just turn around, you know, maybe not so much. If your contain gets run over, it matters a lot. Did you get your third base up in time? Are you macroing well? Do you have, did you kill enough units when you try to bust the contain that you can still hold off the attacks? Because normally contain will keep the Protoss down on two base or make him make only units off of his three bases. So if it did things like that, it still can keep you ahead. Uh, Five-fact timings, those are really weird. Those actually aren't good unless it's a really weird situation uh, where some funny earlier game things actually happened. You know, either there was a lot of pressure or someone lost SCVs or probes or something like that. So let's not get into the five-fact because that's such a weird situation. If the six-fact timing uh, fails, like an outright fail, you're going to lose the game. Because if you're doing a six-factory timing, it means no third base. And you're kind of all in on the attack. You have to do a lot of damage with it. So if the six-fact timing actually fails for Terran, it means he's going to lose the game. Protoss should be able to just roll him over, whether it's through a better economy or just straight up right from there. All right. Hey, at Artosis, I was wondering, as of now, what unit in SC2 are you most excited about?